So does warm welcome to Błażej Żywiczyński. He will have our next, the next, uh, our next speaker. And uh, after the presentation, there will be time for asking the questions. And the presentation is being recorded, so that's why we are using the microphones. All right, so hi. <laughs> I hope that we'll be back in a minute. Uh, don't worry, uh, my presentation is quite short, so we have a lot of time. So. And the story continues. All right, I hope we're good. So, hello guys, my name is Błażej Żewiczyński. I'm a producer at 11-Bit Studios and it just so happens that in 11-Bit Studios we have no HR department. So that it just falls on my shoulders to, to take care of recruitment as well. And it so just happens that I have a major in HR, so I know a thing or two about it from, uh, from a long time ago. But I, I've spent my fair share of, uh, of my studies to, on thinking about recruitment and I've been in quite a lot of uh, interviews in my life, both uh, inside and outside of game dev. And, uh, and I didn't really like it. I mean, recruitment sucks because you never know what to expect and you rarely get feedback and there's just a lot, a lot of messy things about recruitment. So I always kind of fantasized how to make the recruitment cool or fun or whatever and I never really had a chance to do that. But since I, I came to 11-Bit Studios and they told me, so, okay, Boisney, now, so since you're a producer, uh, you'll start recruiting. And I was like, okay and then inside my head it was like fuck yeah <laughs> and and the next slide is about uh, Dilbert because I had no idea what to put in the background and I heard that it's a good practice to to actually have something on the screen while you're talking <laughs> so you can I didn't know if you prefer black and white or colored so you get both <laughs> uh, all right so since since I started recruiting for 11B Studios, we, we sat, sat down with the guys and, and tried to just nail it, why or why does our recruitment suck? And we felt that, okay, so our website is shit. And, and our recruitment system, this you know, software that we were using was really counterintuitive. And the way we were communicating with with our potential employees was just really, really stiff and boring and nobody really liked it and nobody could really answer why we are doing it. So uh, a lot of requirements were just plain stupid and things that you could read in our job offers were like, 
we offer good atmosphere. Like that's something that that you really gives you know gets you over the top. So we thought, okay, so we are in a game dev, so let's just gamify this shit. Because the game gamification is the, the big thing in here. So since we have game dev simulators, why don't we, you know, reverse it and try to apply some principles from the games to actual game dev. So we came up with with a huge analogy that that became a whole framework for, for our thought. And that was that uh, the whole game dev industry in Poland is like one big MMO server. Because we have, you know, it's quite simple. So we have the guilds that, that share the map and the guilds are companies, you know that. Uh, so, and the players are the employees, obviously. So, and we have all types of guilds in an MMO. So we have this, you know, huge red one that, that obviously owns most of the map and is the biggest game dev company in, the Pol in Poland. And everybody knows which one that is. <laughs> there is the pink one that, that really regrets that it just got randomly the color pink, but also that tries to be, you know, the second big thing on the map. But there's a lot of other smaller guilds that are, you know, either are playing for fun or just just discovered the game and try to do something, just, you know, not even for profit. And there's a lot of guilds that, you know, are different sizes but are boasting that they have really laid back atmosphere and and they're not really competing in the territory war. And And of course there are some companies where that were founded by guys who got fed up with, I don't know, the, the huge company that employed them and they wanted to start something of their own. So the analogy is really obvious. And what's more fun, actually, is that on the player side, the analogy is there as, as well. So if you are in Polish game dev for a few years, then you start knowing who the strongest tank is, who the best healer is. And, and you start really knowing these players by names. You know which guys work where, what they do, how skilled they are. Also, when, when thinking about analogy between the players and, uh, and, uh, and employees, the loyalty comes into mind. So players can be loyal to their guilds, but they can also be loyal to friends that they go, go on raids with. They can be loyal to some certain part of a project and then want to leave for another, uh, another guild that provides that. So it's exactly the same in game dev. And also, game dev community is really, really drama driven. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, who, who are here to, to feel good, to, uh, to do what they love. And when you start applying some, I don't know, corporate principles, they get fed up. When, when there's a dick in, uh, in your company, it can cost you a lot of employees who will just, you know, move away somewhere else. And with, with this whole analogy, oh, I forgot, yeah, this is, you know, players, that I was supposed to be speaking about the players while having players on the screen. Yeah, you can imagine that, right? <laughs> so, having that, we, we decided that since we, our game dev industry is so, so similar to an MMO game, then that's really, really going to be easy to to apply some principles to, to our recruitment process, right? So we came up with some things that we wanted to change, and this is how we started to tackle them. Some of them are still in progress, some of them were, are well on the way, but I want to share uh, all of those ideas with you. So first of all, games quantify everything, because that's how they work. They are numbers, right? And life is not really easily quantifiable, but in, in a game, 
when you have certain requirements, you know, there's this armor that you want to craft, and there's, you know, one piece of steel, one piece of orange something, and one, I don't know, some kind of linen or something. And if you have these three things, the game tells you, you will get that piece of armor. And when you read a job offer, and you seem to meet the requirements, you should at least get notified that you're being considered, right? And that's not how it happens in, in game dev. The, the reason why that is, and, and really not even in game dev, it's the whole recruitment in the whole wild world. So uh, why that happens is people don't really think about uh, their job offers. They don't really think through what their requirements are, what to put in there. So right now we are trying to learn that because that's really, really tough to do. But, but what we are trying to apply here is treat the, um, the requirement list like a checklist, just, just like in here. So we need to know whether the, pl the player, the, the, the employee meets these requirements and j just can check everything on the list. And if he can, or she, uh, then, yeah, then we can proceed further. So, um, so that's, that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is a little bit more fun. So, we, we decided that we need to do something about our communication language, because, uh, after releasing this war of mine, I'm sure that you know if if people know us, then then they know the, how how we behave. Uh, but most of the industry might think of us as you know those serious guys that made this serious game that uh, that became quite famous, which was really cool. Uh, but also it paints the picture of you know these brooding artists that want to do meaningful entertainment and that's partially correct because we do want to do meaningful entertainment but while having fun and and our organizational culture is really really weird and wild <laughs> and i'm i'm saying this having quite a comparison and and we are really really weird so we decided to, uh, to write our job offers in a certain way. Just like games have certain flair to them. Like games uh, do have a tone, right? If you, ha if, you, if you produce a cartoonish game, then, then you expect players who want to play cartoonish games to, to play your game. But the, the, the guys that want a ser more serious game will just, you know, play something else. And that's exactly what we want to achieve with our application tone. If, if someone wants a serious application and wants a serious tone in the job offer, he will just walk past by us. That's, that's cool. Ac apparently, he doesn't want to work for us, and probably we don't want him either. So uh, we did an experiment. I, I wrote some, uh, some of the Mm, job offers, and we had quite uh, a feedback on our internal game dev forums. Uh, these are some of the opinions uh, that, that we got. Don't worry, I know that, uh, that these things are supposed to be secret, but the, the authors of these uh, quotations explicitly told me that it's okay to use them here. So, uh, I don't know how many of you are not Polish speakers. Who doesn't speak Polish? All right, so I'll just tell you briefly. So uh, this guy to, uh, actually f felt that he feels like he's in kindergarten reading uh, our job offers, that it's just wacky and weird, and uh, that, uh, that we are probably uh, going to offer programmers just you know, colorful uh, keyboards to, to, to play with. Uh, and and he, he got a, a few likes on, under that, so it wasn't his only his opinion. Uh, and 
other other people were uh, were complaining about some stuff and uh, giving us feedback, and a lot of people were were jumping on this crazy train and thinking, okay, this is fun. Like uh, it just gives me an idea of of a, of a company that just you know wants to have fun while doing some serious stuff, and that was exactly what uh, what our goal was. And uh, two examples of how our introductions to uh, to job offers uh, looked like. So this is, you know, this is just a travesty of a Polish song, and uh, this is just plain mambo <laughs> that, that we just, you know, cooked up because we could. And and this way we we started weeding through uh, the the applicants. And what's what's really fun is that people who applied to to our company sometimes really uh, responded to to what they read in the, in the application. So we knew that they want to you know show us that they can you know have the same weird sense of humor. And and that was awesome because we automatically knew that. We are giving them the opportunity to show us that uh, that they want to to work with us without reading the lengthy you know cover letter because nobody reads that. Uh, all right, so next thing. Uh, next thing is feedback. Games give us feedback all the time. Games are all about feedback. I mean, whatever you do in a game, you get feedback. You either land a hit or not. You you succeed or fail. Whatever, but all the time you get feedback, and in recruitment, you you don't. I mean, when you send an application, most companies don't even have an autoresponder that it actually reads them. But autoresponder is really inhuman, and even though we try to make our seem a little bit more fun, it's in still an autoresponder, so that's that's just not how we want to deal with people with you know automatically and like in an assembly line so we tried to uh, we try to answer everyone i mean. We try to do it in the first week, and we actually do answer to everyone. And it's it's an, a person a personalized answer, telling the person whether it's he or she is going to the next stage of recruitment, and what the stage would be, or telling them we are sorry, but. And after this but, the person gets really, really short, and of course, very general, but feedback, what this person needs to improve. And why we do that? Why are we losing our time, actually my time, to do that? Because we are completely aware that people who apply in at least some percentage of these people wants to improve. And that sooner or later, these people can be valuable. That when, when you have players in the MMO server, if you're level 40 and the guild requires level 90, sooner or later, maybe you will get there. I mean, you're on level 40, you're pretty useless for this company. But sooner or later, you will, if you keep playing, you will get to this level 90, and then we can use that person. And the sooner that happens, the more feedback the person gets, the more support this person gets, the better. And this is actually my personal story of going into game development. It happened a few years ago, and I was before that, I was working for a telecommunication company, and and I really wanted to 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 transfer to game dev, and I was really prepared to you know start from scratch, but I I had no idea how this how this uh, industry works, and I actually got some interviews where I was saying a lot of stupid things. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I could just you know record it and play it back to myself, I would probably die out of shame or laughter or both. And at, in one of the companies, 
the guy who was interviewing me, um, he, he saw that I, I'm really passionate about it and uh, nothing really else. Uh, so I, I asked him for feedback and he, he actually responded after a few weeks that, okay, so here's this book that you could read on design. And this is the web series that, that you could watch. And that's really fun. And here, you could also, also check this out. And if you, you are really serious about this and you want to land the jobs someday, here's what you do. I mean, he, he actually wrote a few paragraphs, and it helped me a lot. I mean, a few months later, I was, in, I was here in the industry, and now I'm standing before you. And I'm really grateful for, for, to Katzberg that he, he wrote this email to me. And, and that's really what we want to pay forward. And if, if you prepare the requirements right from the, from the previous point, uh, you have this checklist. So whenever you just need to give the applicant feedback, you, you just go by the checklist and it really helps you out. It doesn't really take that much time to, to tell the person that, well, your application was really cool, but if you're wanting to apply for a 3D artist um, position, you might want to, you know, enclose a portfolio or something. And, and stuff like that really helps. So, yeah. Great. Third one is a charm? No fucking way. <laughs> it's really hard to put in your own password, right? Uh, so, and whenever we, uh, we give this feedback, I get feedback too, which is really cool because uh, most of the people actually care about the interaction. So uh, you'd be surprised how, how many people really appreciate the fact that you wrote to them, just, just that. And they, they get back to you like, okay, man, really, you're right, my skills are not really that, that great. I was thinking about, you know, just trying to apply, and um, I knew that it was a stretch, but yeah, thank you for, for replying. And, and that, that, that's, just, that's just really cool to, to, to get. But it's, you know, just, just writing back to people that, that, uh, that didn't get to, through the f initial uh, selection is really easy. The, the biggest problem is with the people who, who got, got really far in the recruitment. I mean, the early stages are pretty low cost. So you, you just send a resume that you probably have from somewhere and you can just multiply it and send it over and over. And, and nobody reads the cover letter, so you don't really have to write that. But if you get selected for a test or you get selected for an interview, you need to spend a weekend doing the test or you need to take a day off because uh, you don't want to show up at your work uh, you know wearing somewhere we something weird and telling everyone yeah i've been on a job interview so you're either calling in sick or you just try to, to you know either way the the point is you you invest in that you invest your time sometimes your money and it's really uncool when you get absolutely nothing out of it. I mean, yes, you can say that you get experience from the, uh, from the job interview and that you, you actually learn something in the process, but that's really just you know, fluff and bullshit. So we reached to another uh, game. It's Heroes of the Storm. This is actually my own screenshot where I was defeated uh, on the tomb of Spider Queen map. And even though the purpose of this match was to win it. I mean, victory is really what I was after, nothing else. But even though I lost, I got some experience. I got some gold to, to buy new heroes. My, my hero j just gained an experience. And of course, also, I, I completed one third of a quest. So even though I failed, I still gained something, right? 
So we felt, felt okay, so this person that, that came in fourth on the Olympics and, it's, and just gets away with nothing, let's, let's appreciate these people. And, and we decided that every person that applies to us and gets a job interview or just really gives us their time, we, we thank them with a, with a code for one of our games. Every person like that gets an email from me like, man, sorry, we, we selected someone else, someone who's better, or this test wasn't really that great, we're sorry, we cannot really go with some, someone on your, level, on your skill level, but you know, keep improving because you got really close. And we have this thing in 11-bit studios that we give everyone who, who, who spent their time trying to apply to us a game. So do you want this War of Mine or the Anomaly series? And, and people are responding to that really, really well. And what we are trying to achieve in total is giving them feedback, giving them opportunity to grow. You not only tell them what they are missing, but you also empower them to keep trying. That it's, it's how games make us do stuff, sometimes really stupid stuff, but you know, the, you just keep, keep doing it. And sometimes when you really want something, like get into the, the industry, uh, you still might lack the fortitude to, to go on. And we do want the people to go on because we need more people in game dev. So all in all, what we want to achieve is first of all, better recruitment experience so that the people are happier with the whole process, even if they are not selected. And then they are also more likely to come back to us when they, when they gather all the, all the required experience or materials or whatever. And second thing is better market education. We, we need more people and there is not really anywhere in Poland where, where people can learn the real game dev outside of game dev. So what we really need to do is try to educate them. And that's something that we want to do in the future because as I mentioned in the, uh, in the beginning, our website does suck. We want to um, put together a whole recruitment page where we will be able to explain to people in in as many details as possible, what it takes to fill in the shoes of an animator or a producer or an, an artist or a programmer so that someone can go there and just read about what requirements he or she needs to meet instead of just, you know, seeing a recruitment page of, I don't know, how cool Warsaw is. Because that's, that's just not what helps us. And, and what I encourage you to do is, is to join us. I mean, that's, that's why I'm doing this presentation. It's, we, we are not trying to improve our recruitment just to, to get better employees. Of course, we are trying to get better employees, but we're quite good on the recruitment uh, process. I mean, we, we, we have enough people, but we do know that in, in the future, we will need even more and more, and we have to produce them somehow. So if you are in the game dev industry and uh, want to, you know, just give some tips to, to your HR, and then I highly encourage you to just join us with, you know, some of these ideas. Maybe you have more. And if you, if, if you do, I mean, you can always contact me and, uh, you know, we can share ideas and soon I will be working on gamifying the, the, the inside of, of our, <laughs> of our uh, team, not, not only recruitment, but how to take care of, uh, of the employees um, that are already working for us. And that's also another cool topic that, that I would like to touch on, but it's not a part of this presentation. So pretty much that's a uh, thank you. Very much to Boisai. Any questions to Boisai? Yes. yes. Uh, how much uh, recruiting seniors is different from juniors? Or maybe there is no differences? 
there's a huge difference. I mean, you, in game dev, you have to steal the seniors from other companies. <laughs> That's a fact. I mean, uh, the seniors are already working somewhere and are fed up with uh, the company. Sometimes, sometimes they just want a different project. Sometimes they want something else. Uh, and it, the cool thing is that uh, even with seniors, it's not all almost never about really money. I mean, they do want to, to earn as much as they did in the previous company. Uh, but the most important thing for, for them is how they can develop, how, what projects they want to do. Uh, for example, me. I, I, I did an RPG, Lords of the Fallen, before. But I always wanted to do another type of game that I'm doing now, but I cannot tell what it is. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's really cool because that's on my personal checklist, right? So I wanted to, to, to change company because uh, my previous one was doing an, a shooter that I don't care for. So, so when you're recruiting seniors, you need to really find, first of all, as, an, as in an MMO, you know who your senior is. I mean, you can name the guys that, that can fill your position. I mean, you can really do a list of actual names, people who, who are working and where, and, and even add a number of months until their project is finished and they are likely to switch sides. So that's, that's a little bit different, you know, approach. It's more like headhunting. Uh, hi, I'm Agnieszka. Thank you very much for the speech. It was really uh, interesting and quite motivating. Uh, I would like to ask you about two things. First, about the feedback. That's, in my opinion, some people can react really like aggressive defense themselves. That's you are not right. They have uh, proper skills. So It happens, happened exactly once. Yeah, so that was my question, how, uh, how often uh, it happens? Uh, out of, you know, I've been doing it in 11-bit studios for maybe half a year now, and only one time I got not really aggressive response, but something like, uh, the guy was uh, trying to be a 3D artist, and uh, he was uh, interior designer something, <laughs> and, and he was pretty good, I mean, the, the lighting was okay, but he it was obvious that he never touched ZBrush or anything. So it was a just, just a different skill set. And I replied to him that, well, I'm sorry, but you know, your current skills are just not enough to, 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 to do this. And he, he replied with, you know, this the hurt, the, the, like, okay, so I, I guess that my, my uh, you know, not enough skill set was enough to land me a great job in, in somewhere in the, in the architecture and whatever. So I just pol politely replied that I'm really happy that he is finding job for his skill set and in his industry. So, yeah. <laughs> and my second question is about, um some tests for uh, candidates. Yeah. Do you prefer test on site, for example, three hours for no. design something, or give a weekend and do it and uh, at home because they have like uh, uh, more time and they are in their own environment. But there is a um, risk that mm -hmm. maybe someone will have them. You know, it's if if someone helps them, then. I mean, it never really happened that, uh, I mean, in 11-bit studios, I think we've never really fired anyone. And, and we have this two months uh, trial period, two or three months uh, in the beginning, but everyone passes it, like <laughs> everyone. So it never really happened to us that uh, someone, you know, turned in a great t test and then f we found that, that this person is just not what we were, were looking for. And, and we all, always find a, a place for, for every uh, person that we recruit. That, that's why we, we don't uh, get a lot of people, because uh, we, we recruit, I don't know, maybe on four or five positions at the moment or something like that. But, uh, but we are very careful who we are recruiting, because we, don't, we want the people to stick with us. And um, I, was, I got off track a little bit. Uh, what what you're asking? We want the people to. We never really time the tests. That's that's the thing because our tests are not about how fast you can do something. Our tests are about how good you can be and how not even not as how skilled. It's what kind of idea you will have for a test. 
and it's it's really simple. I, I can even show you, uh, give you an example for for an art uh, for an artist. We uh, we require them to just make a barricade. Just make a barricade, and it kind of should be a little bit modern, and that's that's it. And you would be surprised how many people are failing on this, you know, very very simple asset because it just looks exactly the same every single time. So whenever we get a, a barricade that looks different among you know two other uh, test parts, then then it catches our attention, and it doesn't matter if the person took a uh, week or two days. That's that's just you know redundant. Uh, hi, um, you mentioned recruitment for uh, positions such as artists or uh, designers or, or programmers. Those are positions that require a certain skill set. What about entry level positions like QA testers that don't really require uh, particular skills but require a cert certain mindset? Uh, what do you think about those kinds of recruitments? Do you do those? Um, we we haven't recruited uh, QA or QA specialists for the, for the last half a year, but uh, so so I, I've never done that in uh, in Eleven Bit Studios. But we are thinking about uh, expanding our QA, and we will definitely do that at some point. So what I think about it, uh, it's extremely important that the the person uh, that you're recruiting for an entry position uh, is willing to learn. That's that's kind of you know the, the biggest trait that the person can have. And if you can see that this person is trying to do something, it's a huge plus. I mean, you can. Uh, it's it's kind of like it's not a requirement for for a QA tester to try to make a, his own game, right? But if you see someone uh, that I'll give an example. There is there was a guy who applied to us and showed us uh, in his portfolio how he is trying to do some animations in house. So he he hang a cloth on the wall and uh, and dressed all in black with you know with some <laughs> some black paste on his face so that he could record uh, himself. Uh, Doing some moves and then just you know use this black person on the white uh, on white background to to actually uh, draw the animations after that. So it was really really handmade and it was really awful and but but it was a good idea. I mean he he tried to figure out how to do it and he did it with passion and his skill set was really really low unfortunately but. He's still in my folder to you know f if if we ever need uh, someone for for an uh, I don't know an internship or something, this guy is the first one I'm calling, because I know that he will have the passion to to learn, to to actually become someone that's that's great, and a lot of Q let's let's face it a lot of QA testers are not uh, in game dev to be QA testers, they want to be programmers designers. Designers, designers, and and if you if you see that that this person comes into into your company and wants to be a designer but has nowhere near any skill set or mindset to do that, you you just have to think ahead with this person. You know, if if this person really is trying to you know is is a student uh, on a, on some technical university and uh, is, and is actually learning programming but is really still too weak, but it's. Uh, 20 year old guy that that just wants to you know get some cash for uh, for his studies and learn the industry that's the, that's a great person but if the, it's just like some guy that has no skills because well you can lick walls and find collisions with really no skills i mean you need hands really and but that's just not a, a hire that i would recommend okay but um so, sorry for pick, uh, taking the sure microphone for so long. Uh, you can't really quantify passion. So, what do you do that? How do you do it with uh, job ads, with job offers? That's uh, that's what you see in the interview. I mean, uh, you cannot quantify passion, but you can see hints of it. 
definitely. I mean, the, the, there's a lot of things that you cannot quantify, like great knowledge of C++. I mean, you can write it down, but you cannot really list all the comments that you need to know and which ones you don't really yet need to know how, when you're a junior. But, uh, but with passion, it's quite simple, actually. It's, it, it just pours out of the, the resume or the portfolio or whatever the person is sending your way. And then, on the, in the interview, that's, uh, that's a, in the interview is a part of, of, uh, of the recruitment process that I would not dare to gamify. Because games do awful job at, at every interview. I mean, all the dialogue choices are shit in every game. So, uh, so, so that's actually the, the only part that's just purely about human interaction, not about some, you know, using mechanics uh, to to quantify whether or not this person is suitable for you. Job interview is about finding out if you like this person. Any more question? Last question? If not, Błażej, thank you very much for the great presentation, keep you, yeah, keeping you. us interested all the time and answering many questions. I, I'm really glad that so many people came, even though there's the Diablo guy somewhere else. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you all guys for coming. Thank you very much.